We shall describe the various stages of an adhesive coronaradicular restoration. An impression is taken at the start of the session as a record of the initial situation. The earlier temporary restoration is removed and the casts are studied to assess the functional aspect of the tooth to be restored. The occlusion impact should also be checked in the mouth. X-ray analysis allows visualization. A gauge is used to determine what length and diameter of fibre posts to use. The canal obturation is removed with a Gates drill. The length of work will be predetermined and maintained until preparation of the canal is complete. Next, a Largo type drill is used to shape the canal mechanically. This occlusal view already gives an opportunity for assessing the remaining walls. A rubber dam is set up. At this stage, we analyze the remaining walls. We check for a minimum dentine height of 2 mm and thickness of 1.5. Next comes mechanical cleaning, this time using ultrasound to further prepare the canal. The predetermined length will show on the drill. This drill must be checked and used in order to complete the canal preparation. A silicon key prepared earlier is used to check the relationship of the post to the future palatal face of the tooth to be restored. Once the post has been adjusted, it is sectioned with a speedy disc or a cutting plier. The post is then tried out on its own or with a matrix. The matrix must be placed and in the right relationship to the post. Here this vestibular view shows the whole setup. The matrix is cut to fit the gingival festoon. Drain holes will also be made from the proximal side to avoid any compression of the material afterwards. The assembly is once more checked in the mouth. Once the post has been checked, it can be chemically prepared. First, we remove any grease with alcohol. Next, dry carefully. Then silane is applied to make the bond between the carbon fibre resin post, the adhesive and the composite. The tooth is cleaned with EDTA solution. Here an interdental brush is used to apply the solution thoroughly. The tooth is then carefully rinsed, here using ultrasound or a water syringe. It is then dried with a syringe and paper points. In this occlusal view, we see the relationship between the post and the canal. The post must be set up against the gutta percha and free with respect to the canal. Now we come to the adhesive stage. The adhesive itself and its chemo-curing agent should first be vigorously shaken and then mixed in matching amounts. The mixture will be applied directly to the post and then the resin coated post is light cured. As for the dental tissues, all dentine surfaces must be thoroughly etched with orthophosphoric acid for between 10 and 15 seconds. Next, the area is copiously rinsed with a syringe or ultrasound to remove all excess etching. The area is dried with the syringe and the intra-canal space with sterile paper points so that it dries without drying the dentine substrate. Next, the pre-mixed adhesive is applied with a special microbrush, taking care to brush the walls for at least 20 seconds. Excess solvent is allowed to evaporate for 5 seconds. Then a second layer is applied for 5 seconds and evaporated for 5 seconds. The adhesive is then light cured. The restoration composite is injected using an automix syringe with a tip suitable for ensuring a deep seat and no bubbles anywhere in the canal. 
The post is then immediately put in place against the gutta percha. Its positioning must be checked before the material sets. The composite should be injected right into the base of the matrix to prevent any bubbles forming. The matrix must be completely filled to ensure there is no deficiency. The matrix is placed in the mouth and the operation is completed. At this stage, a few seconds light curing will set any excess composite for ease of removal. While still plastic, the excess can easily be removed with a curette. Then the composite is fully and completely light cured. This is a dual set material. The outer surfaces will set by light curing and within the canal, curing will of course be completed by the self-curing stage. The matrix can quite easily be removed with a scalpel blade before moving on to the various stages of peripheral preparation. Once the rubber dam has been removed, peripheral preparation can begin. We start with the incisal face, then the palatal and lastly the peripheral. This preparation must be checked. It should suit the type of definitive restoration. At the end of peripheral preparation, the quality of the surface's condition is examined, showing that the material used has been properly homogenized. A temporary resin is injected into the initial impression so as to make a temporary tooth for the new clinical situation by duplication. Excess resin is flexible and easily broken so that this new temporary tooth can be easily withdrawn. It is finished and then polished. Lastly, it is given a final check and temporarily sealed. This temporary material sits relatively quickly and any excess is easy to remove. At the end of the session, clinical and X-ray analysis is used to check all the previous stages. Among other things, this X-ray shows the homogeneous appearance of the various materials used. These results after one week and three months give a good idea of the clinical success of this restoration. That success can be reproduced thanks to the ergonomics and compliance of the protocol recommended on the ITNA kit.